All right, it's uh, August 2nd. I wanted to do a quick update on where I'd got to in getting ready for Oshkosh. The original plan was to take this thing in skeleton form and put it in the Skytrax booth so everybody could kind of see where I'd got to, some of the mods I'd done. And unfortunately, I jacked up my back and derailed my Oshkosh plans. But I'm gonna spin this thing around and kind of give you a quick walk around what you would have seen had everything worked out. I got it up on the gear. This is Acme gear. As far as I know, it's the first gear they've actually built for a Highlander, at least this design anyway. I designed it out at least where I wanted everything to land and they took care of the rest and it just turned out beautiful. Fits great, looks great. I'm really happy with it. I can't wait to see how it actually works. As you can see, I got the Behringer brakes on there. They're just mocked up. Couldn't be happier with the looks of all that stuff. Some of the things I am changing is the engine mount. This engine mount is designed for the, the normal Highlander. I think with the XL version, I can move it four inches forward, do away with the four inch spacer. And more importantly, keep my turbo in a stock location, which makes oil return issues much easier to deal with. So more to follow on that. Me and a buddy were doing some talking on a possible way of changing the motor mount where you can actually fine tune a little bit. In other words, get your CG more dialed in before you lock everything down. I am gonna try it. If it works out, well, I'll probably show you either way because I've got to make the pieces to do it. What I was thinking and uh, uh, whether or not it ended up working out. I know a couple people are gonna ask about the firewall. That actually worked out by half stance well the sheet you get or this sheet but both of them were 24 by 36 so then we're never going to cover the firewall completely anyway and with my pod panel I have a box in there that separates the heater core from everything else in the pod panel and with that box and everything in location it's next to impossible to get that heater core out if it was ever to fail so the two-piece firewall actually allowed me to remove the heater core out the front if something ever goes wrong without having to yank the whole engine off so I think that's actually going to work out really well. I do have at least most of the stuff done to get the extreme windshield installed. I think that's going to work out really slick. The other thing that I did do, if anybody's seen Sean Taplin's Super Stole and how he did his floor with the Lexan in it, I really like that. I thought it was a neat idea. And this is a Highlander, so it's actually built a little bit different. So I had to change things up a bit, but I think I'm really gonna like the way it worked out. As you can see, I've got my cable race and uh, it's also a race with fuel lines. I've got it located. Again, I'll try to get it to focus a little bit better. All my wires and lines are tucked in there. And that piece you see down the center on the bottom, that'll actually have a metal cover on the bottom side which will sandwich the Lexan, the lower piece of Lexan, the external piece of Lexan, will be sandwiched between the cover and the lip you see on the sides. And then you can also see some attach points on the bottom side of the firewall toward the front there, which uh, follows the V shape I talked about earlier. And then the back side of the race, this L shape here is where the fabric will attach and come up. The other thing that I did get done, I'm not 100% happy with it. I mean, it turned out great. It looks great. I don't think it's really sized right, for one, is the carbon fiber triangle behind the fuel valve selector. I was thinking about changing that maybe a little bit anyway. I could make it larger. I don't know if you've seen Gary Winterton's. He actually, I think he brought the piece all the way across. But it does give you more places to locate stuff. and it gives Gives you a real clean look and I haven't decided how I'm going to do the carpet and stuff in there if I am or if I'm going to try something different maybe even with the Kydex. So more to follow on that. I think I did show you this but this is the latest on my stick grips what I ended up with there and then I think this is going to be probably at least until I'm flying the last version of the throttle flap handle. Made some changes with the whole mechanism down the bottom, cleaned things up, got the operation even smoother and a little bit more reliable. One thing I did find, you know, there's about a million different ways you could do this. And believe me, I went through a whole bunch of them. But the important thing to me was the way it operated. The, uh, you know, function reliability, of course, was, was very important to me. But, you know, the whole idea behind this was to never have to take your hands off your controls. The way that this works out, which you folks that have seen it before know, you just pull it up and it ratchets in all three positions. You can drop it all at once by pulling it to the side and dropping it all the way down, or you can drop it incrementally into each position. I really like that operation. You know, the whole intent is that you're always gonna have your hand on your throttle, especially when you're in a situation where you're coming into a landing, or at least you should. And so, I mean, it's got a nice positive lock and location. One of my concerns with it, you know, one that a lot of people bring up is, 
you know, well, your, your passenger could bump it and knock it out. Well, the only way he's going to bump it and knock it out is if your hand's not on it any longer. So I'm going to try this. I may be wrong. There may be more changes to follow. I do have a design that basically uses a, uh, like a clutch handle where you get to grab it and release it like a normal flap handle. The only problem with that is it does interrupt your throttle control just a little bit while you are doing that. And again, like I said, you know, the intent was to always have your hand on it. So I do like this operation. I did get my headache rack done and ready to install. Like I said, I'm getting ready to yank all this stuff back off. Not all of it, but the gear, the engine, the interior, most interior back out of it so I can get it ready to start covering. But I really like the way this turned out. I've got a couple things left to add to it. One is a USB for my phone to keep it charged up. End up being a great place to put my GPS antenna. I put a red and white light, dome light on the bottom side. I think I mentioned this before, but for you guys that are interested, actually there's a company out there called Rocker Switch Pros. You go on there, they have a design page where you can go in and you can lay out the switches exactly like you want them. Fairly inexpensive, about 10 bucks a pop for the covers to get exactly what you want. They are all backlit. You can get multiple colors. I think it's red, white, blue. There may have been one more, but I ended up going with red on these. Whatever the item is, lit up all times with red. And then when it's activated, the lower light is on. So I think that's actually gonna work out great. I'm trying to think if there's any other interesting changes that you guys haven't seen. The only other thing I think people might be interested in is this is made by Holly and it's a just called a split loom. It's nice, sturdy stuff i didn't have any idea how it was actually made so i ended up going with three quarter i could have went with a half inch but where it's really handy is if you need to cover a harness that has multiple trees branching off everywhere and now you know when you're actually wiring these things you're adding wires and adding wires and changing stuff until you get it done this is a great way to come back and add loom after you're finished without having to try to destroy everything that you've already gotten to put together so i think that is just at least an idea of where i got to uh, i really wished i would have made it i heard from everybody they had a great time but hopefully i will see you guys in the near future Thanks for watching. Thanks.